gas training, flame rectification. My name's Alan Hart and in today's video we've got his ex-ideal engineer back and he's going to go through flame rectification. This video today is absolutely amazing. It really does explain in lots of drawings and it really does explain about flame rectification. So yeah, without further ado, let's go over to this video. Hello YouTube. Um, I'm back again with another video. Um, I just can't keep away. <laughs> this is what happens when you've got a lot of time on your hands at home. Um, I thought I'd um, do a, something a little bit different today. I've been I, I've been talking about um, ideal boilers a lot, and I think I've covered everything on the boiler. From I'm pretty sure that if you if you go back and watch my videos, there's almost every part I've covered on the boiler. So before I talk about um, <clears throat> something a little different, um, and I, I mean I've done a, I've done a video on this before, but this was on the logic and it was on flame rectification. It's the same on the Vogue, but um, flame rectification can have a couple of different forms. It doesn't always work the same way. Um, Flame rectification on boilers nowadays works slightly different to what it does on the standard efficiency boilers with the atmospheric burners. Um, and there's a couple of variations as well. Not all will work exactly like what I'm going to show you today, but I'm going to talk about flame rectification. And this is mainly for the older type boilers, um, standard efficiency, atmospheric burners, um, non-condensing. <coughs> Uh, and what I'm going to talk to you about is how it kind of works and how you can test for a fault. So, uh, again, I've done one of my um, diagrams. And um, first, we're going to talk about the problems that you can have with flame rectification. And it, basically, flame rectification is just to tell that what it's doing, it's confirming to the PCB, the circuit board, that there's a flame present and it's okay to um, open the main gas valve solenoid. It's safe to do so, basically. Uh, you can get a few problems. Um, the first one I'd say here is um, oxidized burner, which basically means the burner's rusty and you're not getting um, a good earth connection, a good connection. So that's one to look out for if you've got a really rusty burner. <clears throat> that could cause problems with flame rectification, flame lift. So if the flame is not, um, it's not touching the probe properly because you, you might have problems with oxygen. You might have poor oxygen into the boiler, a uh, problem with the flue and it could be lifting the flame. So um, the flame's gotta be touching the probe. So if the flame's, you know, moving away from the probe because of it's searching for oxygen. That could be a problem. Um, loose or broken harness. So the harness, the uh, the wiring harness, you could have a break in it or, you know, it might not be a good connection. So what you want to do there, you want to test continuity on the harness. Uh, make sure you've got a, a less than one ohm between the harness and the connection there. But also, you know, you can test the um, probe as well. Um, so you need a good connection all the way back to the circuit board. If you haven't, if it's loose or damaged, broken, uh, you'll get a problem. You can get a problem there. Uh, poor or loose earth. Again, the earth cable, it's very important. Um, we need a good earth. You can do your, you can check that on your, um, when you're doing your electrical checks to the boiler before you, you know, before you start, um, putting your hands in, you want to be doing your safety test, you know, your um, your polarity, your short circuit, your earth continuity, resistance to earth, all them kind of things. And when you do that, you'll be able to check, you can test the earth from your, um, from your main earth point on your boiler, make sure you've got a good earth there, because if you haven't, again, that can cause poor rectification, contaminate, <laughs> contaminated flame sensor. So um, carbon, carbon on your flame, since I've done a, I did a video on that, you can check if you've got a carbon buildup on a service, you want to be cleaning that off. You can get a buildup of carbon on it and it can't um, send a good signal back um, down to the circuit board. So um, make sure that's clean. And you can, again, you can test the, um, you can do a test on your, uh, with your multimeter on, on ohms. 
and you can just make sure you've got a good connection on your flame sensor. And last one, I mean, there may be a couple more. <laughs> These are the main ones, you, you, you know, uh, but the last one is a uh, reverse polarity. So that's when you're live and neutral, of course. Um, and this is the one I'm going to talk about, really. I'm going to show you how to test it and why it happens. And so reverse polarity is basically, like I said, live and neutrals crossed, crossed. If you can imagine it like your flow and return pipes on your centrally system. Um, it'll still work so if, if you cross the flow and return it'll just flow the water will flow the opposite way around and that's basically what's happening with reverse polarity so rather than your 240 volts coming in on your live and going back on your neutral if you will it comes the other way around so your 240 volts is coming in on your neutral and coming back on your live and um that can affect the rectification because how typical rectification works it um so, i'll show you on this one so basically the circuit board is sending a 240 volt ac signal to the end of this probe the ions in the flame um convert the signal back to dc back to the circuit board and then the circuit board knows there's a flame there. That's pretty much the, the simple way of looking at it. I'm not going to go too complicated because I want you to be able to understand this. So the simple, the AC signal going up to the, up to the probe is a simple sine wave signal. So you've got on a sine wave or a typical AC sine wave, you've got a positive and negative part of the wave, positive, zero, negative zero positive zero and that's how a typical ac sine wave works so that's being sent up to the probe um once you've got the two uh, the dc signal back the rectification wave looks like this so it cuts through the sine wave so we can see the positive and negative side once the dc signal is is um detected by the probe the dc signal pretty much cuts through the sine wave on this and then the circuit board can only see the rectified part uh, the half of the half of the sine wave and therefore it knows that there's a flame there and it can open the solenoid to the gas valve safely what happens if you uh, reverse the polarity, this this wave um, is the other way around. So rather than just seeing the positive side of the wave and when, when it's cut back, you'll see the PCB board, sorry, will see the negative part of the flame rather than the positive part of the flame. It'll, it'll see that bit rather than that bit. So when the PCB sees the other side of the um, sine wave, it knows there's a problem. And then it just cuts off. It just um, ceases ignition. It turns off and then tries again. It'll give it a couple of attempts. And if it can't rectify the flame, it'll just go to lockout. I'll show you on my multimeter how you would test for reverse polarity and uh, what to look for. Because the house will work. I mean... What the funny thing is, a TV will work on reverse polarity. You know, most most appliances you wouldn't even know. Um, you had reverse polarity apart from your boiler not working, so it's a funny one. So people think that there's a fault with the with the boiler, but it can be just that um, you know everything's working fine, but your boiler isn't. So I'll set up um, some testing equipment and I'll show you how you can uh, test it. Okay. Right, here I am, set up. Um, I've crossed the live and neutral at the mains plug. Don't know if you can see that there. Um, the live should be on the left and the neutral in the middle. Uh, but I've switched them the other way around just for this um, exercise. And I tried to um, show you with my multimeter, but it's really difficult to show you the live to neutral, live to earth and neutral to earth test with... Um, just one hand and holding the camera so 
I've rigged up my socket and see, so I've connected my earth clamp um, to the earth bolt on the boiler. I've got my probes on the live and neutral. And I've got my socket and see here. And as you can see, it's showing the earth is okay, but the live and the neutral are flashing red. So it's saying there's a problem and you can hear the audible beep. Um, that's telling us that the um, live and neutral across so we've got reverse polarity um, like I said I tried to show you with my multimeter but I couldn't uh, hold the camera and um, do it so I've had to use this I, will, I would use this anyway to be honest I'd use my multimeter and if I did have reverse polarity I would then plug my socket and see in anyway just to confirm it you can see that it's saying we're getting 207 to 253 volts and we can do an earth loop test but um for the purposes of this video i'm not going to do it again because i've got i'm holding the camera with one hand and i'm holding the probes with the other now that i've found that i've got reverse polarity on this boiler i need to know whether it's on the fuse spur or the whole house is um suffering from reverse polarity so the next thing i'd do is i would use this to check a couple of the sockets in the house so I'll rig that up and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so we've um, got problems with our boiler. It's not igniting or rectifying the flame. I couldn't show you in my multimeter um, how you would test for reverse polarity. Um, so I've just added a little bit to this picture. Um, so you'd set your multimeter to voltage AC and you'd be looking between live and, live and neutral uh, 240 volts, live to earth 240 volts and neutral to earth less than 15 volts you may get a little bit of a slight bit of back feed down in neutral so less than 15 volts is kind of all right I suppose but when you've got reverse polarity uh, these two readings will change you'll still get uh, 240 volts because you've got a um, you get 240 coming in on your neutral uh, and uh, there's a potential difference there, so you'll get 240. Um, live to earth, you'll get uh, zero volts or less than 15 volts because your live is now on your neutral, not on your not on your live. So this will be switched around. So you'll get 240 on here, neutral to earth, because your live is coming in on your neutral. You'll get 240 here when you've got reverse polarity and you won't there. So once you've... Um, Determine that you need to determine whether it's the fuse spur or the whole ring. The whole ring main could be um, um, reversed, and you would never know because, like I said, everything would work. So what I would do um, in this case, I would get my socket and see again. I would take out um, these probes and I'd plug. There's a plug connection with a, with a two forty volt uh, with a with a plug. Plug that in. Plug it into a socket and then switch it on and then again see what the ring main um, tells us and you can see there all green lights which is telling us it's wired correctly so the so the internal wiring of the house is fine um, I'd always do this because I've had it before where Let's say they've been doing groundwork outside, they cut through the incoming cable and the electricians connected it back the wrong way, you would never know. So, and you can see that obviously we're getting 240 volts. The ring's wired in the right way around and then if you want to, you can do an earth loop test while you're here, you may as well. And again, we've got less than one. So now we know that the uh, reverse polarity is somewhere on the boiler, it could be the incoming live to the boiler, the fuse spur, it um, could be a couple of things, but uh, we've determined by the socket and C um, that it's not the house and it's got to be something to do with the boiler. So um, I hope this video has helped. Uh, I'm doing this to, you know, try and pass what I know on, I think it's important that, I mean, I don't know everything, but it's important that if we if we can teach others and 
help others and ultimately help the customer. And if, you know, uh, if you, if more people know what they're doing, then the customer benefits, don't they? So, um, yeah, this is a quite a different kind of video. I've, I've got nothing to do anymore. <laughs> I've not got a job, so um, I think I might do more of these and maybe even make my own channel or I'm, I'm not quite sure yet. I've got to do something. Um, I want to help. I want to pass my knowledge on in some way. Like I said, I don't know everything, uh, but what I do know, I'm happy to share. Um, if you would like to see more or, you know, me do more on a channel or carry on doing on Adam's channel, or if someone wants to give me a job, <laughs> that would be nice. But um, yeah, like again, um, I hope this has helped. I'll try and do some more and um, stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much for that. If you've got any questions, please put them in comments below and I'm sure that um, Kevin will come on and answer some of them questions for you. Thank you.